I'll check. Not that I say, oh, we're leading and then later. Welcome back to GCTV and welcome back to the beautiful Mexico City. I'm getting stuck in with my guest already before we even reveal her. That will come up in a few moments time. But if you have just joined us, what a moment, not just Fernando Martinez Soma, the Mexican, but for the Prague Lions who go on to win here in Mexico City. And because of his heritage, because of his culture, Fernando Martinez Soma has absolutely every single one of the thousands of Mexicans that have come through to support today and they have been cheering for Prague Lions if they came out of the Czech Republic themselves. Take nothing away from young Thibaut Spitz as well. Very impressive in Miami. Now makes the trip up through to Mexico as well and continues to jump well. A 23-year-old on a 9-year-old horse is just jumping well beyond his years. And because of that, they pick up their first GCL victory in over two years. New York Empire thought they were there. They fall ever so short. Let's show you the final three there for Mexico City, just to give you some perspective as to how things end. It's Prague Lions in first place. It's New York Empire in second place. And Monaco Aces take a bow. And Monaco Aces getting onto the podium the first time in many, many years of Monaco Aces getting onto the podium. Rieseback International, a very, very strong comeback after at one stage looking as if they would finish way, way down the table. Stockholm Hearts powered by H&M, one of the other teams on 16 with the Doha Falcons. Mexico, Amigos, and Can Stars in eighth. Falcons Wart United jumping with two very young riders and Madrid Emotion. They'll be very disappointed with that 28. Two teams eliminated as well, by the way. We must remind you of that. Michael Duffy and Daniel Doiser taking up the Rome Gladiators and the Shanghai Swans. Well, where does that bring us up to speed now? Come stars, powered by the Iron Dames, come into the studio. Sana Tata, thank you very much. We begin to see the preparations, and we will stay with Sana until that happens. Sana Tata, talk to me about how the team has been discussing today. It maybe didn't go according to plan. Have you met with your teammates? What has the conversation been with them? Yeah, of course, we made this plan. Uh, it didn't went like we hoped. Uh, I think still Natalie did a really good round. She uh, ride good, uh, some silly mistakes. Uh, uh, Catherine also wrote a good round, also some silly mistakes, not big mistakes. Uh, we had a very strong first round, um, but we have to work on that for the second round for next time. Let's talk about how things have gone from a very impressive start in Doha, where you guys won. It was a magical night for you all. You take the championship lead. You hold on to that championship lead in Miami, joined with Rome. We're waiting for the final standings now. I have a feeling that you may have fallen off. If not, we'll confirm that, of course. Talk to me about what this now means going through to Shanghai. What has the planning been? Has there been conversation about Shanghai already? No, um, I, okay, we had a really, really good start. Also very nice for the sponsor, of course, uh, as she set up this whole new team. Um, what is most important, I think, for us to stay consistent. And now we're ending up eight in Miami, also eight. So that's still in the middle of the results. It's not bad. Of course, we go for better. But to stay consistent is, I think, the most important to finish the year well. After that very high in Doha, to have the eighth place finish in Miami, the eighth place finish in Mexico, is there a little bit of fear that maybe some form is dropping? Or is it just two difficult stages? I don't think so. I think uh, the riders I'm from, they're all motivated. Um, maybe we didn't have all the luck and we have to uh, talk about the plan and everything. We just have to make a good plan for Shanghai, but I think it's not. Uh, we're not falling down. I think we will be strong in uh, Shanghai again. Okay, you didn't jump round two. You did jump as an individual, didn't have a good day with an elimination. Can you take us through what happened for your elimination as well? Um, yeah, my horse cum laude did the second round. He's still a little bit green um, on this level, actually. He's 10 years old, but didn't do so much when he was younger. So, yeah, I think he felt a little bit of pressure. He stopped uh, only because I think he was a little bit confused. I quickly tried to turn around to still stay into the, yeah, for the Grand Prix. Uh, obviously, he was confused and he did not understand what was happening and he lost it a little bit. But that happens with horses with no experience, or less experience. I remember you telling us in Doha that, in fact, there was a joke when we met up with you guys that um, I think half the team said you want to finish on the podium and you very quickly said on top of the podium. That was your, that was your prediction straight away. 
Has there been talk about how the rest of the season will go? You were saying that Dao Shanghai again, you'll make some preparation, but is there a long-term goal and a short-term goal or long-term discussion, short-term discussion? How does the team operate? No, of course it's long-term. Of course we want to be uh, good all over the whole season and not just sure. some shows. Uh, of course also some short uh, period because you want to be good on each show. But like I said, uh, we want to be consistent and want to finish on top of the podium in the final on and on the end result. Mm. That is the goal. But it's the first year and also for our team, for for the whole for the riders, for the sponsor, for the team manager, we have to yeah, get to know each other. But I think we uh, we will definitely get there. I think so. And a final note about jumping here. There was a lot of talk about moving from the small ring of Miami to the giant grass ring of Mexico City. Wonderful crowd, lots of color. How has it been for you and obviously for the team to come back to Mexico and jump here? Actually, I really, really love Mexico. All the space and the grass arena is always good for my uh, good horse, Conquidam. Uh, it's always a little bit difficult, like you said, from Miami to Mexico, but uh, I must say Miami is getting bigger. For my feeling, it's already bigger than two years ago that I've been there. So that's a really good improvement from the from the show, from the organizing. So it was already better, and then Mexico is the top of it, of course. Okay, well, I think CanStar is powered by the Iron Danes are still in a really, really good position, I think, with the new sponsors, with the new teams, with the new branding. I think you guys have started 2024 exceptionally well. Two difficult stages now, but I have a feeling that you guys will continue to perform. So thank you for today. We look forward to seeing uh, the team in Shanghai. Any decision on who will be there? I'm going to be there. Yep. Uh, Jan is going to be there, and Kim Emma. It's okay. first show for Kim. First then. show of the yeah. year. Yes. Okay. Well, good luck to Yana, to Kim, and to you in yeah. Shanghai. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. Sanatesa from the Can Stars, powered by the Iron Dames. We are preparing for the official podium celebration that is getting underway in just a few moments' time. If I just lean over my shoulder, I see that the dignitaries are standing by. I see Thibaut Spitz just over the shoulder, in fact, of Sanatesa, with a very, very big smile on his face. It is the first win for the Prague Lions in over two years of Global Champions League action. So because of that, you can imagine that they are are going to celebrate this long into the night as will Fernando Martinez Soma the Mexican coming back home winning with his team and wow what a nice celebration that is going to be so the teams are getting ready to come in we're going to stay here on screen with GCTV just to make sure that we get every single moment of them coming in and remind you as to how their New York Empire finishing in second place and the Monaco Aces finishing in third to round out the podium for Mexico City 2024 this is GCTV TV. My name is Mark Lewis. We will continue to break down who has performed well. We will continue to look at some of the really big defining moments. Dennis Lynch in particular, double clear. First man to jump double clear on two different horses today as well. Let's go join the feed, the podium celebration as we stand by and await for the riders to make their way back into the ring to be celebrated and awarded their trophies. Do your campfire make the podium and so do the Monaco Aces. And just for reference, the Monaco Aces, for them, it is their first podium since Monte Carlo 2021. And there they come. Fernando Martinez Sommer on Lady. And Thibaut Spitz on Impress. And that mirror and that stallion could make beautiful babies and good falls, if you ask me. And look at the smile of, of Fernando Martinez Sommer. It's a big moment for Thibaut Spitz, but it's a special moment for Fernando. He's been part of this team for quite a while now. Last year, did not always produce the results he wanted. Almost said to Anna Kelnerova, I don't deserve to be on your team, but Anna kept him on board. And a few months later, he gives her Two podiums on two stages in Miami and in Mexico. And Fernando, you deserve it. Enjoy this moment. Let it uh, trickle in. Let it sink in.
What a special moment for Fernando Martinez Sommer and for the Prague Lions, powered by the Czech Equestrian team. Dennis Lynch has carried the team this uh, weekend. Lynch with his double clear on two different horses. Lynch with uh, Cordial and Brooklyn Heights and Spencer Smith, contrary to uh, last weekend, the second round was much better from him. And that resulted in uh, the podium for New York Empire, the second place, and a completely different look on the face of Spencer Smith now it is a huge smile for the talented American and Rome gladiators have dropped from a co-lead now down to six and are 17 and a half points behind on uh, Prague Lions on the leaders can stars 12 points behind Mexico is still third Stockholm Hearts have climbed up to fourth and there come Monaco aces Luis Felipe de Azevedo and Duarte Shebra first clear for the Azevedo first clear for the team now this is also a beautiful moment the Azevedo a Brazilian with plenty of friends maybe even family here his son of course part of the team of the Monaco aces powered by lion of uh, porches and after sitting joint last they are now middle of the table in uh, ninth place and so a great moment as well for this team And there's the podium. Impreska van Kattenheijen, bred by Tony Raman and Mieke Strobe. Owned by the Spitz BV, the company of Thibaut and his family. Impressed by Indoctro K van Kattenheijen and Vagabond de la Pomme. Goes back to uh, the great man, Utopia van de Donkhoeven, the pedigree of Impress. And who rode Utopia van de Donkhoeven? Peter de Vos. So there is a tie in uh, that family. Lady van de Harterhoeven, bred by Mathieu Feyen, the mayor by Casal, Clarimo, and uh, Corrado. Owned by uh, Fernando Martinez. Fernando Martinez Berlanga, that's the father, if I have it right. Monica Sommer, his mother, and uh, Fernando's wife, Maria Victor Aguirre, the Mexican who is at home with uh, Fernando's newborn daughter, Olivia. It's all in the family here with these Prague Lions, powered by the Czech equestrian team. Monaco Ace is powered by Lion of Porches. First podium in three years. Luis Felipe de Azevedo and Duarte Shebra. In the Spanish speaking country, they speak Portuguese between the two of them. A Portuguese and a Brazilian. Great moment for the Azevedo and for Shebra. And for their partner, Lion of Porches, the fashion brand, the designers. Spencer Smith and Dennis Lynch for New York Empire, powered by Lugano Diamonds. They failed to make the podium in the presence of Georgina Bloomberg, but I do think that owners and managers will be more than happy with this second place here in Mexico City. New York Empire, powered by Lugano Diamonds in second. But there come the winners. Prague Lions, powered by the Czech equestrian team. Thibaut Spitz and Fernando Martinez Sommer. Rookies traveling to Miami. Champions, winners and championship leaders as they fly back after Mexico City. And the Mexicans celebrate this as if it is a home win. Fernando Martinez Sommer is one of them. And Prague Lions is part of Mexico. And 
Uh, is Jan Tops, Alvaro Arrieta. I also see the president of uh, the Mexican Equestrian Federation, Juan Manuel Cosio. And there's a competition presented by GNP Seguros. Who present the trophy, and that must be a special uh, feeling, and a special moment for the Mexican partners of this Global Champions League stage. Uh, so they can uh, present the trophy to a Mexican rider. Fernando Martinez Sommer and Thibaut Spitz for Prague Lions, powered by Czech Equestrian. It was already a small victory before the season started when it was announced that the playoffs every other year would return to Prague. And now this is a beautiful win as well. This is Juan Manuel Cosio, president of the Mexican Equestrian Federation. The trophy for the second place riders, that is for Lugano Diamonds. Powered New York Empire. It was uh, Raul Curi, the director of uh, GNP Seguros, with the trophy. And this is the founder and president of the Global Champions League, with also Alvaro Arieta. Part of the organizing committee of this exceptional venue, this exceptional stage. Mexico has treated us beautifully. And Monaco Aces, powered by line of porches, are uh, on the podium. What a brilliant podium this is, and what a great stage this uh, has been. Prague Lions powered by Czech Equestrian, New York Empire powered by Lugano Diamonds, and Monaco Aces powered by Lion of Porches make up the entire podium. Jan Top, Salvaro Arieta, Juan Manuel Cosio, as well as Raul Curi of GNP Seguros. And who's first at the bottle? Thibaut Spitz actually was quick to catch, but who gets the cork off? Oh, they have not released yet the cork. And it is uh, Fernando Martinez Sommer, who now also not only jumps double clear with the same horse, he's also the fastest on the bottle. And Thibaut Spitz just stays on the podium. I don't think he sees much more champagne in his eyes. But does it still matter? Not at this point. Not anymore. Spitz's jacket is soaked. I don't know if he is uh, traveling to uh, Shanghai, but somebody will be able to uh, give that a good wash for him. Spitz and Sommer. I've got a Grand Prix coming up tomorrow, and so do you. So make sure you are with, uh, with us uh, once more here, live from Mexico City. I hope there is some pretty good laundry mat services, dry cleaning services around Mexico City because uh, Thibaut Spitz and Fernando Martinez Soma are going to need to get those jumpers clean professionally based on the amount of champagne that they caught there on that podium celebration. What a moment, not just for FMS being at home, what a moment for the team to win their first GCL title in over two years. And what a moment for the owners, for the sponsors, some who are here, for Anna Kelnarova back in the Czech Republic, for Niels Brownsius, for Peter DeVos, 
all of them supporting back from Europe for them to watch this performance, to watch FMS and to watch Thibaut Spitz get over the line here in such sensational fashion. What a victory for the Prague Lions, powered by the Czech equestrian team. There will now be some laps of honor, and the Prague Lions will hang around for a few extra laps. New York Empire, powered by Lugano Diamonds, and the Monaco Aces, powered by Lion of Porches, will have one final opportunity to say thank you and goodbye to the crowd here in Mexico City, who have been absolutely sensational. The weather has been on point. The sun has been shining. The fans have turned out in their thousands to enjoy and celebrate Global Champions League today. And this is a wonderful, touching moment for the top three to have the opportunity to say goodbye and thank you to the fans who turned up today. Speaking of New York Empire, let's quickly hear from Spencer Smith. We'll hear from him as a second-place finisher. But these are his thoughts after his performance, his jumping today first round for you but you came into round two and straight into a clear that must be one hell of a relief yeah absolutely i thought actually both of my horses were very good today um kind of getting to know the the first horse i rode and i was really pleased with him this week he, he came a long way i think uh with you know matching up with me and and then super happy with my kind of greener horse there and he's like rising to the occasion so it's pretty cool Dennis also got a double clear there but we saw when you went into the arena that he you guys were chatting what advice did he give you yeah, you know, Dennis and I, we ride all these teams together all over. We're very close, I'd say, and um, he's just been on some crazy form, like clear after clear after clear, so he's super happy. And uh, he just told me to ride the last few jumps like verticals. I have a very good horse, a lot of scope, and he just said ride that triple combination like they're all verticals and, and just let him do it. So uh, that was kind of his, you know, he helps me a lot. So, Do you think this round has given you a boost after Miami Beach? Yeah, absolutely. I was a little bit down after Miami, had a good first round, didn't come together in the second. Very, very disappointed. And uh, now I'm quite pleased. So, Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Such a huge amount of mental strength for Spencer Smith, who had a difficult Miami, a difficult round one here in Mexico, then to return and jump there clear in round two. We'll hear from him and Dennis Lynch in a few moments' time as we wait for our winners, the Prague Lions, to come through into our studio. I am very excited to have Thibaut Spitz and Fernando Martinez Soma here in studio. But let's continue to take a look at some of the big talking points of the day. Richard Vogel for Rieseback International, powered by Kingsland. A lot talking about, a lot spoken about, shall I say, a big upon a lot of talking about his inclusion into the team and how and why, because of unique circumstances, that if a rider is out for more than 45 days, like Owen McMahon is, they are allowed to make a short-term substitute. And that is what Ludger Bierbaum has done, a former rider at Bierbaum Stables, now coming through to jump for them on a Global Champions League stage. Well, Richard Vogel jumped four penalties in round one, but then delivered a fantastic clear in round two, delivering on the expectation of Ludger Bierbaum and the team. Let's hear from him a little bit later. But of course, we're also talking about Simon de Lestre. We are talking about the Doha Falcons. They have been very, very impressive as well. The time, Frederick spoke a lot about the time of the Doha Falcons. And Simon de Lestre, finally, for the first time in 2024 thus far, collected his first clear in Global Champions League. Simone, you've had one down so many times so far this season. You've finally gone clear. That must feel great. <laughs> yeah, of course. And six rounds, five times one down. With, uh, every time a good uh, good round. So really hard jump, like really good all the time. Bit uh, pick and lucky, I would mean. Uh, but Amelizina was already clear last week in the Grand Prix. He was uh, winning yesterday and still clear now. So, yeah, can be really proud of him. And I have a really fantastic feeling. Uh, so I hope the best tomorrow for the Grand Prix. Your team ended on 16 today. It's not a terrible score. We're seeing a lot of fences down today. Yeah, so I just finished now, so I have not so much ID, but I hope we stay in the good points. Well done. Thank you. Simon de Lestre finally registering that GCL clear and you can see what it means to the Frenchman to finally get over the line, keep all the fences up and deliver a much needed clear for the Doha Falcons. I believe Rosie Tapner is getting ready to talk to the Monaco Aces. Uh, we will, when we get confirmation, go through to her inside the ring uh, to find out exactly what the Monaco Aces boys have to say about that wonderful performance. What a surprise result it was for them. A first podium in a very, very long time 
time in Global Champions League history. So, if she is ready, no, hey, yes, Thibaut Spitz is jumping in. Fernando Martinez Soma is jumping into the studio. They're so excited. I'm keeping them back. I'm trying my best. Monica Oasis, Rosie Tapner, let's hear what they have to say. Thank you, Mark. I'm with the Monaco Aces now. As Mark was just saying in the studio, that's a first podium in a very long time for the Monaco Aces. Was that a surprise to you? Honestly, surprise I cannot say because I trust a lot in my partner on the team. And we think we have horses that are not good enough. If you ride well, we can catch it. But, uh, yes, yeah, very happy, but surprise not because when the bells is ring we need just to fight to, to, to catch the best results so very happy not surprised but it sounds like that you're a brilliant team together you have full trust in each other how was today for you it was a super day today I had a great support from uh, Filipino um, my horse has been very consistent at this level uh, and, and I think uh, together we did two very consistent rounds in both, uh, both of the rounds, so uh, I couldn't be happier with how we'd end up. How proud will the rest of the team be looking on and seeing you podium today? We, I think we have a fantastic atmosphere in our team. Could not be better. And then I think that also made the difference. Uh, we all support as each other. Uh, we here, we have both of, of us and my son, who compete in the team, and we have also a partner who is the, normally the training from Duarte, who give a big help to everybody. So in my opinion, we, we are very consistent and very happy. I'm sure the people who are in Europe now, and maybe they don't catch all the night to see uh, uh, this fantastic uh, show jumping. Uh, they are all proud of Monaco team and our partners, uh, uh, Lion of Porsches and everyone. Huge congratulations to you both. Enjoy this. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Hope to see you, you again. <laughs> Welcome back to GCTV. I'm being distracted here, and I'll tell you exactly why, because I'm giving myself a lifeline here because of these boys that are in the studio. We welcome into the studio your champions of Mexico City and how good that must feel for this team. Fernando Martínez Soma and Thibaut Spitz join us live in the studio. Gentlemen, welcome. Before we start, Fernando, did you just say that that is your grandmother? Yeah, yeah, the lady in, in yellow. Does she speak right. any English yeah, at all? Of she speaks good. Please, can someone bring his grandmother up to the studio? <laughs> Senora, por favor, por favor, si, si, si. Fernando Martinez Soma's grandmother is here, <laughs> and I want to bring her into the studio. I have to ask her how she feels about her very, very famous grandson and the performance that he has put in here in Mexico City. Whilst we wait for her to come up, FMS, at home, double clear, is this the greatest story that you could have written for this show? Yeah, definitely. It's something really special to be at home. And uh, for me, it's always a pressure to represent Prague Lions. You know, we have such good riders that I always want to deliver my best. And today, finally, it came something really good and at home. So I'm very, very delighted. And the home crowd seemed sensational. They were, they were supporting Prague Lions as if they had come from the Czech Republic themselves. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, in uh, Mexico, we have such a happy people and you know they support every Mexican that is in the ground so yeah. for sure they make us feel special. That's amazing. Senora, por favor, anda aquí. <laughs> por favor. Oh, look at that. Oh, qué orgullo. Felicidades. Senora, can you tell me how proud you are of this young man? Oh, I'm very much proud. I'm so happy. You know, my son and my husband are, were also uh, riders. riders. And now my, my, grandson. my grandson. Ya se me olvidó el inglés. To watch him jump like that here. Yes. It's mucho especial, ¿no? Especially today, and I'm so happy. My heart is this way. Lovely, lovely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll take a seat over there. We'll keep talking to your super grandson, Abuelita, of Fernando Martinez Soma, joins us live in the studio. Thank you so much. That is sensational.
Where's your grandmother, Thibault? She's not here? Still at home. Uh, She's still at home? I, I hope uh, they watch as well. <laughs> but uh, no, they're uh, always with a big crowd at home watching. So, uh, yeah. I want to talk to you, Thibault. We spoke about in Press K, and we asked you last week, looked really good in Miami, but this is a very different challenge, a very different ring. It looks as if the superstar that you have can jump anywhere. <laughs> talk to me about how in Press K felt today. Uh, it felt good. I must say, it felt a little bit uh, that if it had, it was struggling with the heat. Uh, it felt a little bit quiet. I think, um, luckily, uh, Fernando managed to uh, to do a clear round with uh, with the crowd. It gave a bit of adrenaline for Impress, mm -hmm. so that I think that gave him a bit of a boost. Um, you know, I must say, it feels really good. He's all the scope of the world. Um, so it's it's amazing to have a horse like him. Maybe, Fernando, you don't seem to struggle with it because maybe you're from here, but you talk about being tired. Was the altitude a talking point? A lot of people we spoke to today said, I felt the altitude when I'm here. For you personally, did you feel that today? Oh, yeah, you feel you feel uh, that it's different. Um, I've, I felt it also on my horse yesterday that uh, after the... The second round, uh, like in the 155 class, that he was a bit, uh, a little bit tired. I say with Impress, it, it was quite similar the first round uh, to the second. But uh, yeah, it's different for the horses, and he always, as a, uh, he doesn't really like the heat. So uh, he, uh, maybe because he's black as well, he, that he, it's a bit more tough on him. And as a stallion. Um, but no, yeah, then it's maybe also a little bit good that he's a bit more quiet, that I can get to ride a little bit more. So yeah. also has its uh, positive sides. OK, stay where you are. We have New York Empire on the line. We're going to hear some reaction from New York Empire, powered by Lugano Diamonds, finished in second place today. Rosie Tapner standing by with New York. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I'm going to start with Dennis here because two clear rounds, double clear on two different horses. You made that look very easy, but just how tough was that course? I like always these uh, uh, two round teams uh, are very, very um, difficult and we've always known that. And I think we were, I was very lucky to be able to change uh, two horses and uh, both ran fantastic. Cordial uh, won the first class individually and then Brooklyn Heights who's been great here before, uh, also won the second round and um, yeah, helped us to finish on the podium. So we're very, very grateful also uh, to Georgina because last week we were in the lead and then we, you know, we didn't uh, get it done in the second round. So it's good to make a nice comeback and uh, so we're very, very grateful. And also to Spencer, he really, uh, really pulled it out in the second round. So we're, we're delighted. Absolutely. Have you managed to speak to Georgina Spencer after the podium so far? We haven't talked to her yet, but I know she'd be pleased. Um, you know, I rode her horse in the first round, and she let me borrow it just for for the week here. And she's so great. You know, we're super grateful for that. And uh, she'd be watching every round, so we'll definitely speak to her after. I know you're both very close as friends. How much have you helped each other this weekend? You're looking at each other like not, but I know you are. How much have you helped each other this weekend? Oh no, I never helped him. I'm not his friend at all. No, I'm joking. I said if I can give him a few pointers. He's a, he's, a, he's a great fella and I'm uh, always delighted to um, pull it out of the bag for him sometimes and he does the same for me. So, uh, no, I we're, teach Dennis we're, a lot. I teach Dennis a lot. And it's, it's work, but... No, it goes in there and out there most of the time, but uh, yeah. Anyway, well done today. We get on. We get on great. Well, listen, today it works. Huge congratulations. Enjoy this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And New York Empire having a word with uh, Rosie Tapner there on their second place finish, powered by Lugano Diamonds. Still waiting to get some reaction uh, from Georgina Bloomberg, they say. Uh, back with our champions, back with our winners here. Fernando, what was the messaging after Miami? Talk to us about what was discussed from Miami until here, between whether it was Niels or Peter or Anna. What was the team talking about on their approach to Mexico City? Yeah, well, I think it's two, two very different venues, so... After Miami, we were very happy that the horse jumped like this, but it was still a challenge to come to a completely different venue, and we also needed to feel a little bit the, the horses in the first classes and then make a decision which horse is going to do the teams and as well the second round. Uh, in my case, I'm, I was going to ride Lady, hopefully both rounds, but I really wanted to have a feeling on the first one and then decide for the second one. Championship lead comes your way as well, Timo Smith. I don't know how... how Maybe unimaginable that might have been a couple of weeks ago, but all of a sudden the Prague Lions now have a championship lead. Talk to us about 
how was that ever in the planning? And be realistic with us, because this is the team that has struggled to get into the GCL Super Cup semi-finals, knocking on the door, fighting for top four. Here you are with the championship lead all of a sudden. That's a very unique situation, isn't it? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, uh, I think last week already was a bit uh, above expectations, and, and this week is even better. So I think our, uh, our trip to, uh, to America has been yeah, it's been unbelievable. It's been uh, it's been amazing here. Uh, now, uh, yeah, we try to definitely defend uh, the the armband here. Um, but okay, it will be a long season. I think it's only the third stage. So, um, but I think I think we're uh, with with a good team. Horses in good shape, good riders. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely try to defend that and um, for uh, go to Riyadh um, when we already have to ride the. Uh, around less would be would be really nice yeah absolutely i'm going to ask you guys to put your frederick the Bucker hats on you're going to turn into commentators now right <laughs> i'm going to play the round for you i want you to talk me through what is happening in this round if i'm not mistaken fernando you are first let's get fernando's round up onto the screen let's have a, a, an idea fernando as to what was going through your mind let's get onto that show the round and have commentator fernando martinez soma take us through the round and what was happening in and around each and every jump this is the round of fernando martinez soma go ahead yeah well, that was fence number one she always drifts a little bit to the left so i knew that i i gave some space and then the nine were gonna be a bit quiet for me because i was going to the left then it was just steady eight there uh, she was actually feeling really good. That looked so smooth, Fernando. Yeah, she was feeling good in the back rail, so I didn't need to put too much pressure on for the back pole. Uh, so I just stayed quiet a little bit in this double. It was a big uh, entrance of the double and a big stretch there. So I just waited a little bit for the for the Oxford to come. Um, I think she's she's a very careful mare. So with those tall verticals, it's actually good for me. Uh, it gives a nice feeling. Then that oxer, my plan in the beginning was to go in six and seven in that line. But as she jumped really nice, the oxer, and, and, and land really balanced, I could just wait in both those lines for the extra stride. And there came the, t <clears throat> excuse me, the time penalty risk that our new graphic showed. Were you worried that you were a little bit slow at the stage? I did in, the, in those because it was a long line and you needed to wait a lot, you know. Then I tried to be a little bit sharp in that turn. And then in the end, you know, that, that triple was so delicate that I just trusted a little bit the Oxford to stay balanced and then go through the triple in the short seven. I didn't want to put pressure in the front pole. And that final, that final line and that triple combination was just so testing. What a move from Peter Grant to give you guys that triple so late in the round. Thibaut Spitz, we have your round as well. Let's bring that up and let you do uh, much the same. Great job, by the way. Whenever you are done with riding, we're going to bring you straight <laughs> into here. Uh, Thibaut, much like Fernando, then take yeah. us through how this is going for I you. I think I jumped a little bit too much to the left on number one. Then I was a little bit stuck on the nine. Um, and then, yeah, I got the, the, the fault there. And then I felt immediately a good reaction on the Oxer. Um, so I felt confident again. I knew I just had to uh, stay quiet, keep on thinking, keep on riding, um, keep the jump, don't, uh, don't get too much pressure. And then, like, he really started feeling really good again, like he... I really started feeling again like he always is. Um, so I think here on the next Oxford I got a really good shot and then I was I was gone for the for the six and the seven. I think that line went very easy for me. It was, uh, when did you start to get nervous with the fence going down? You know you still had two more fences in hand. Were you thinking about that? I, I actually didn't know because even when I when I finished um, I didn't. I didn't know uh, what what happened before. I didn't really follow the class. I just knew uh, the wrong gladiators um, were, were a bit unlucky. So now I got. Uh, I knew we were going to be close. Now I did a triple combination. What well, it jumped really good. And then I was a bit too much on the inside for the seven. I had a little knock there, but uh, luckily it stayed on. Luckily, it stayed on. You did have the extra fence in hand, so even if it had fallen, at that stage you had enough because of Fernando's clear. You said very well that the, the American leg, the American tour has been very successful for you. Now we get ready for Shanghai in a couple of weeks' time, and then comes the really busy European summer. Can you give us any idea, Fernando, what is the plan for? Let's start with Shanghai. Has there, has there been conversation about Shanghai just yet? What does the team look like? Yeah, the plan is that uh, it's three riders going. Normally, it's going to go Pierre DeVos, uh, Thibault, and myself. 
Um, normally, okay, I was going with core and a bit of a more green horse as we're three there. Uh, but no, now I need to think about if Lady is ready to do another big show mm -hmm. or if I need to just give a little, a, a smaller show for the summer because it's going to be a, a busy summer there. Yeah, it is. Have you, how, how far ahead have you guys planned, Thibaut? We're talking about Shanghai and, and Fernando talks about the busy summer. By the time you get to those summer shows, it feels like it's a show every single week. Have, have you individually, have you the team thought about the summer and how it looks? Yeah, I think um, okay. We, we have to watch now a little bit for the for the globals. It's it's already good that the horses are in good shape, and that I have uh, now two horses who can go to the globals. Um, I also probably have to do a couple uh, couple nations cups. Um, but I I think uh, I think the horses feel feel really good now. They they still need some shows also like like Fernando said. Maybe it's also good to give in between a smaller show as well. Um, it will it will for sure be a busy busy season, so I think it will be good if we can uh, if we can all go to to different uh, places and uh, save our horses a little bit because it will be a long season. Yeah. Well, you're champions of Mexico. You are the new championship leaders as well. A fairy tale story for you too, Fernando. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Congratulations. Excellent. The Prague Lions, powered by the Czech Equestrian Team, your winners here in Mexico City. And as we say, a brand new championship leader. Frederick de Baca, I hope you are still on the line, and I hope you are going to give us some wonderful feedback. A a night of first for Monaco Oasis, for New York Empire, and for the Prague Lions as well. What a sensational finish to Global Champions League Round 2. And what about our winners of Mexico City, Frederick? Let's start with Prague Lions. I'd love to get your thoughts on how the day has gone. Yeah, it was unbelievable um, how we played out in the end. Also with the Rome Gladiators incident, of course, that's a little bit of uh, a negative for the Rome Gladiators. You would have wanted that they, if they wouldn't win the stage, that they would have gotten a uh, yeah, a good result out of the stage, which was not the case for Rome Gladiators, powered by ClipMyHorse.tv. On the other hand, um, Monaco Aces, actually, they... They deserve this. If you see how tough this course has been on uh, on riders, on horses and teams, that's uh, a really strong performance from Duarte Shebra and uh, from Luis Felipe de Azevedo. The very strong mental comeback from Spencer Smith. And finally, the proof of Dennis Lynch that he can carry this team. I know uh, the team has been re relying on him a lot in the 2022-2023 season. He had to jump a lot and didn't always go uh, his way. Now it has gone his way. But the way that it has gone for Prague Lions is absolutely uh, brilliant. I just remember how Fernando Martinez Tomer was nearly, Sommer was nearly in uh, tears after the um, big uh, playoffs there in uh, in Prague. How he felt down, how he felt disappointed, how he had disappointed and let down the team. But then for him to come back so strong this season is uh, very remarkable. That's uh, a mental resilience, a mental um, elasticity, you should say. But then for Thibaut Spitz to come in. As a youngster, 23-year-old, not that much exposure at five-star level, certainly not in these situations, not to be the closing guy that has to win it for the team. That For him to pull it off the way he did, wow, that was uh, really strong. And of course, you have to say that in case the team would not have had the large margin, maybe they would not have won. But OK, that is what ifs and if situations were different. But the situation is what it is. And that is that Thibaut Spitz has won it for the Prague Lions, powered by the Czech Equestrian team. At the age of 23, and to give the team the lead also in the standings is absolutely phenomenal. And Frederick Sperrett thought maybe for the two former leaders of Rome Gladiators and the Kunt Stars. Kunt Stars not having a great day in the ring. And then that shock surprise elimination for Klapton Mushofter going on to win the LGCT Grand Prix of Miami barely a week ago. What a turnaround it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Must be the altitude. What a turnaround that is for Kunt Stars and, my, and the Rome Gladiators. Yeah, and then you have to keep in mind, Mark, that um, Ken Stars, powered by Iron Dames, um, had Sanatese in round one. They took Sanatese off for round two. Sanatese competed as an individual. What happened to Sanatese? She was eliminated on uh, that uh, center vertical, the Liverpool vertical, what was it, at fence seven. Imagine that she uh, would have been on the team. 
that it would also have been eliminated. So it just shows how those managerial roles or the managerial choices have an enormous impact. Just the way Deutscher explained about maybe not having the right horses and riders on the team in uh, Miami. Now the team of Ken Stars made the right decisions. It's something that we surely have to unpack tomorrow in uh, the day after because there is so much to talk about. But uh, yeah, different choices had uh, very different outcomes here in uh, Mexico. I agree. Freddy Tabaka, thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. Thank you for your great commentary again. And as Freddy correctly points out, there is a lot more GCL content to come your way as we get ready for the day after that will be shot tomorrow. And we'll look back on a fascinating afternoon of Global Champions League action. Let's remind you of the final rankings, bring those up for you and give you one final look as to how things ended here in Mexico City at the end of the weekend. Stockholm Hearts jump up, as do New York Empire. Now they're just two points outside the top three. Can Stars lose their lead for the first time since the opening stage of Doha? And because of today's victory, those 30 points going the way of the Prague Lions, your champions of Mexico City, and now your new championship leaders as well. And Monaco Aces, well, they add 21 points to their tally and jump up to ninth. Madrid Emotion, Falkenswart United, and the Shanghai Swans all far, far lower than where they would like to find find themselves and that is where we leave things here from a championship perspective we say thank you very much Mexico City from a global champions league perspective the next time you see global champions league will be in Shanghai good night time flies the energy of the city pulses through my veins memories turn into seconds lessons from the past and victories echo in my mind now is the chance to challenge myself, to write my story. Here, where the passion for equestrianism meets the elegance of oriental tradition. The Longines Global Champions Tour of Shanghai, from the 3rd to the 5th of May.